new markets. China is about to become the largest market in the world where they're actually putting a price on carbon. When four provinces in China launch their cap and trade system, they will become the largest set of people, larger than Europe, larger than what California is doing, larger than what's happening in the Northeast and the US, where they're actually working under a system that values that future we're talking about. And eventually, we're going to have to figure out a way to put our values into our financial system. And that means cleaner energy, more access to energy, and those are the parts of the story that we have to hold together. So it's not just innovation and science, it's also what we call the market pull. Technology push, market pull, we have to bias that in this green direction and much more rapidly than we're doing today. I mean, it, it, uh, with all due respect, isn't that a bit pie in the sky in the sense that as you look at Congress, you look how it's designed, that that sort of world that you would like to see happen probably isn't going to happen. So if, if, if that isn't, and I'll contrast that with Japan. I just got back from Japan, and there's a term in Japan called setsuden, which means essentially conserve electricity. It's remarkable. Japan has cut down its gross national energy consumption by 15% in almost no time. And there's like this setsuden mania uh, out there uh, in terms of, you know, people are shamed if they take an elevator or, or uh, you know, lights. And, and, and it's a fascinating kind of group culture that has completely embraced this notion of conservation. I can't imagine that happening in this country without a major price hike. So I really disagree. I mean, after the California energy crisis in uh, 10 years ago, electricity use was cut by 10% by an ad campaign, not by all the fancy stuff that came later. And the reason why I don't think it's pie in the sky is because the, the world we're evolving into, China doing a cap and trade experiment, California and Western states launching their version, a Europe under their own version, and the Northeast. That's basically a billion people under a light initial trial version of the energy economy that we need to go to in terms of the market conditions, not in terms of the whole process from R&D into market. And I think that the real key feature here that we're, we're not putting front and center is that the new energy economy has to provide products that you want to buy. You know, the iPod and other devices didn't take over because someone told them from Washington. It was fundamentally a better product. Well, having your home make money, having your small business make money on selling power back to the grid, that requires a smart grid. That requires the kind of network thinking system solution that we need to do more of. And it's actually one of the areas where the U.S. has a competitive advantage. And we're not taking advantage fully of those efforts. That's why I would say it's not something that just because U.S. Congress is bottled up on this right now doesn't mean it's not a better energy system. And when you look around the world, China, Brazil, Mexico, are all places that are pushing more rapidly ahead of us. So carbon pricing is one of the things. It's a new currency we need. But we have second best measures that most of the world has embraced. Right now, it's got a nerdy name. It's the feed-in tariff. It's giving a, a bump in price for cleaner energy to get the markets rolling. It's worked wonderfully in a number of countries. There are a couple places where it was done too exuberantly, but it's a natural intermediate step. And it's the kind of thing that makes the world I'm talking about nowhere near as far off as you know, the squabbles on Capitol Hill today or tomorrow.